Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to measure DC current with a digital multimeter. Okay, so there's a few things to consider when you do a current measurement that's different than a voltage measurement. The first big thing is that the instrument, the multimeter measurement, has to be taken in line. And what do I mean by that? So if you have a circuit, uh, let's say that we're gonna do a simple test circuit like this where you have plus or minus nine volts and you're gonna feed into a single resistor, okay? Um, if you do a voltage measurement, <clears throat> you can simply, as we've seen, you can simply attach on right here and you can do a voltage measurement okay so this would be the dmm doing a voltage measurement and that's fine you do it across the resistor but when you have a current measurement you have to allow the current to flow into the multimeter and then back into the circuit so it can actually do the measurement so what we do is we basically have to break the connection of the circuit okay so this isn't this is not there. <laughs> and so we bring that up into the multimeter, okay? And then we take it and go back in, okay? So if I drew that again to make it a little bit clearer so you can actually see the gap in there, what you'd have this time is you'd have plus or minus and it would come over here, go up into the multimeter, come back into the circuit, then you would come down <clears throat> and complete the loop, okay? So just think about it as you can't see the current uh, with this type of measurement because the current's going that way. And even if you did take some of the current and split it out into this type of measurement where it like voltage, it would mess up your circuit. It wouldn't be a representative, it wouldn't be representative of what you're trying to measure. You have to actually intercept the current, run it through the multimeter, and then back into the circuit for it to work. Okay, second thing you got to look at here is what are the positions of these connectors. Notice that common is always the same, but you actually have two different connectors here for current. So one of them is milliamps, and then one of them is uh, 10 amps, okay? And what that means is that they both have fuses in them. And so you, you don't want, if you're going to measure something that's like five amps, if you put it into this one that's made for milliamps, it's going to blow the fuse, okay? And that's to protect the meter. And then if you come over here, so you'd have to plug the, the meter into there. You'd have to plug the lead into there. But if you're only measuring milliamps, you plug it into here. And it becomes really obvious when, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can basically look right here and you can say, okay, so this is the current measurements right here. So it's like these guys right here, A, and then the flat line is DC. So obviously 2000 micro, 20 milli, 200 milli, those ones are obviously in this position because they're all milli. But if you ever go into that position, the 10, that means you're measuring amps, okay? You're measuring something more than, an, than 200 milli. So anything more than 200 milli, you need to flip into this position and actually move the leads, okay? All right, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let's take a measurement on this and see how it's gonna go because when we actually do this, we want, <clears throat> We don't just want to use the, the nominal values. We're actually measuring real stuff now. So let's go ahead and do a measurement on a circuit that looks like this. So we're going to go plus or minus, and I'm going to come and do this right here, and I'm going to go 9 volts, and let's do our 150 ohmer, okay? Like I say, whenever you measure something, you, don't, you usually have an idea of roughly the order of magnitude. So what I want to do is I want to measure the current right here. <clears throat> so we're obviously going to break it, come up into uh, the multimeter, and then go back in there. Okay, so this will be not there. And so what I want to do is I want to build this circuit, and then I want to, well, actually what I want to do is I want to measure the resistance first and get the real value. Then, <clears throat> Then I want to build the circuit and get it going, and then I want to measure the voltage across this. So I want to come in here and do this. And then what I want to do <clears throat> is measure the current that is flowing in the loop, okay? So let us begin with uh, kind of the difference between nominal and measured, and then we'll put it all together. Okay, so let's, let's make a table of like uh, Ohm's law for calculations. So what I'm gonna do is we'll make a table called uh, um, nominal, okay? And We'll come in here and we'll say V I R, okay, <laughs> and and just to keep it in the same position. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have for a voltage. This will be measurement one. We're gonna do a voltage of nine volts, and our resistance is 150 ohms, okay. 
and we'll put we'll let's put ohms like right there and volts right here and amps right here and what we'll do here is say <clears throat> let's do the calculation okay so this is actually straightforward okay life is good life is good life is good get our calculator up here and so we go here is a little trusty and so we're going to do v equals y r v is nine i is what we're solving for R is 150, so I divide both sides by 150, and I get 9 divided by 150, and it is 6 milli, 60 milliamps, okay? So that's roughly what we are calculating, so I'll put that in uh, 60 milliamps, okay? All right, now let's build the circuit, and we'll do the exact same thing and see how different it is. So let's make our table as measured, okay? And we'll go ahead and do V, I, R, okay, and now let's go see what actually happens. Okay, so we got that right there. Let's grab our breadboard. Okay, so I'll keep that thing right there. Okay, so here we are. Here's our breadboard. <clears throat> and what I want to first do is I want to grab my 150 ohm resistor. Okay, let me get that clip out of the way for you there. And here's my 150. Okay, I already know how to read the, the color code, so I know how to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quick resistance measurement. So I go ahead and put it over in resistance. I know it's 200. Let's turn that backlight on so you can see it a little bit better. And I'll go ahead and clip on. Boom. Boom. And what do I get? 148.9. Okay, so I get 148.8. Okay, so notice it's a little bit different. That's fine. All right, now let's build the circuit. Now this is what gets interesting because I have my circuit here. Okay, so I'm going to bring 9 volts in. Luckily, I had already installed my 2.1 millimeter jack <laughs> like I did in a previous lab. And so that gives me nine volts across the entire board. And so the reason that that's interesting is because what I wanna do is I, I got nine volts and I got the plus and minus nine volts on all these rails so I can build the circuit wherever I want. And so I have everything on the screen here. The only thing I gotta do now is say, I just wanna put this Two, I could put it directly between power and ground or nine volt and ground, but then I wouldn't have the ability to measure it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this resistor in the ground and then I'm gonna take a jumper wire <clears throat> and I'm gonna plug it into nine volts. And so this right here now is nine volts and that's that, but I don't have them connected yet because I'm gonna use, I have to do a current measurement on that. So now I'm gonna come over here and let's go ahead and put old trusty into current mode. Okay, so I got my buddy, so there I am. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leads and I'm gonna clip onto this. And so I will have clip here and then I'll clip here. Okay, clip, clip. And now I'm ready to take a look at what's happening. Okay, and the answer to my current measurement is 56. Point four. It's like, oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, so that's, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, current is gonna be 56.3, okay, milliamps. It's like, interesting. So it's not quite 60, but you know what's interesting is I measured the resistance. I actually didn't measure the voltage. Uh, let's go see what the exact voltage is because it might not be nine. So I did my current measurement. First of all, that's how you do a current measurement. But this is more interesting because we wanna know like what's the voltage on here? So now remember how you do a voltage measurement, okay? You do it across the resistor, all right? So let me, let me do this. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put them into the same terminal strip so that I can connect them. So now I have completed the circuit and I have current flowing. And now what I wanna do is let's go and take a measurement on the voltage. So I'm gonna come in here, backlight it. I'm gonna go DC voltage. And I know it's going to be somewhere between, you know, it should be around nine volts. But let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to clip onto that side of the resistor and this side. And what do I get? 8.3. Man, my <laughs> battery's dropping like a lead balloon here. So 8.3. <laughs> Why is that so low? Well, it turns out with batteries, depending on how much current you pull through them, their voltage drops. So if I had something that wasn't as pulling as much current, it would actually not drop as much. So if I was only pulling like a microamp, this would probably be a lot higher, okay? And so here's what I'm gonna do. And just to show that to you, uh, before we verify that that's right, watch what happens if I open this circuit, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure between, now there's no current flowing, 
and I'm going to come here and here, and look at what my voltage is, 8.71. It's still dropping. It's still not at its fully charged level, but it's certainly higher than what it is when I was drawing that 56 milliamps. Okay, so now the last piece of the puzzle here, we've learned how to do the correct measurement, and we know, and now we have our values here. I want to check this and see, if is this pretty dang close? So what I did was, this is the measured value of voltage and this is the measured value of resistance. Let's see how close our measured value of current was. So I can come over here, I got my Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. I got myself an 8.32 volts times I, which I'm solving for, 148.8. And let's come over, here's old trusty. And we got boom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and divide I on both, or 148 on both sides. So I go 8.32 divided by 148.8. And the answer then becomes 55.9 milliamps. And pretty dang close. So now you're sitting there going, wow, this is great. You also, I mean, that's really close. But you're also going, why is this all not exact? And it's because, notice that that uh, multimeter, when we were taking these measurements, and see how it was kind of changing? There still is, is error in the measurement. This 148 ohms, 0 0.8, it was going like 148.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 8, 7, 9, So it was still kind of bouncing around. Same thing with voltage. It was like 832, 831, 833. So these numbers also have tolerance in them, and it just has to do with how many significant figures that we're able to display with the multimeter. But I'll tell you what, if you're within a couple percentage of the right answer, then we're doing a pretty good job. Okay, that is it. That is how you take a current measurement with a DMM, and that's how you also verify that Ohm's Law works, and that is it.